Welcome back, everybody, to Fantasy Pros MLB Fantasy Fest 2024. It's me, Joey P, the Welsh, and look who just showed up. Eno Saris, everybody, fresh from spring training. He's from Fangraphs. He's from the Athletic MLB. He's fresh. from everywhere. Uh, fresh, ready to go. <laughs> uh, now, Eno, for those of us uh, like myself and Welsh who uh, follow you on social media, it's been a little bit of a chaotic 24 hours. You come home from spring training. I feel like uh, the apocalypse happened at your house. Is everything okay now? Yeah, yeah. We have this external hardwired f uh, alarm, fire alarm that, like this, like a bell, like a like an old school red bell on the side of our house that had been ringing for thirty six hours when we got around, when we got home. So none of my neighbors are looking me in the eye, uh, mm. and uh, we had to turn off all the power and the water to the house uh, just to make it stop ringing. And uh, I had to spend all day yesterday fixing things up around the house. But uh, we're mostly back to normal and uh, getting <laughs> well, back on track. Is. And not to mention you were doing you had to do like a podcast from an outfield. We had torrential hail when you were out here. Eno and I were going to get together. It didn't end up working out. We weren't able to catch up. But like there's hail one of the days you're doing a podcast from like I think you did oh it God. from like the freezing. stands and stuff. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it, was, it was crazy times. Yeah. Unbelievable did, stuff. Like just going to circuit training is, is difficult enough because like I was trying to hit like two camps a day and like I'm trying to prepare for all these players and, you know, like and, and, and yet like there's a lot of standing around doing nothing. And then in the back of my head was always you have to pod today. You have to find a place to podcast today. So I'm looking around everywhere I'm at. I did one from like the stairs. I had yeah. one on the backfields where I was like kind of balancing my computer. Um, you know, so I was like every place well, you I should went. should do it like a, a thing where you should ask your thing. Where am I podcasting from today? If you find, it's like, where's Waldo? You it's like, Car no, like Carmen San Diego. Like where in the world yeah. is Eno yeah. Saris pod? I think that's part of the fun. You know, yeah, you never yeah. know. He's out there in the back. He's, fun. you know, he's got a helmet Sunday on the backfields <laughs> yeah. and there he is with a microphone in his hand. All right. We're going to talk about some breakout pictures. Nobody better to talk about this subject with an Eno. Before we do, just a shout out to a sponsor of today's show, and that is Underdog Fantasy, the place to go when you are playing best ball this year. MLB draft season is upon us, everybody. The Welsh and I just did a draft in the Dinger contest, $750,000 in prizes, $100,000 to first, uh, and we gave you all the cheat, cheat, uh, the cheat sheet codes, basically, because we found all the guys that are buried in ADP, so go watch the show. We just did it on Monday. It's on the channel. It's only $10 in that tournament, by the way, and it closes out opening day on the 28th. So jump in, sign up for that one. When you sign up for Underdog, use that promo code FPMLB. Again, that's FPMLB to get your first deposit and match up to $100. And in case you're not good at math, that's 10 free entries into the Dinger contest. There you go. 10 times 10. That's 100. But use that promo code FPMLB and join Underdog today. Again, you can do the one-on-ones. You can do the Dinger draft. You could do the 12-on-12, 30-second draft clocks. Uh, you could do the eight-hour draft clock, whatever suits you. Your best, best ball is over at Underdog. Download the app or go to Underdog Fantasy today. All right, Eno, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Let's talk about some pitchers who could break out in 2024. Before we get to some guys on our list, I want to know if there's a name that you are just all in, ready to go, locked and loaded, 2024. Damn the ADP. Eno Saris is going to have shares. It might be this first guy, to be honest with you. Well, like, Bobby Miller is the know. first guy on our list, but I don't yeah. know if that's the first guy on his. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love Bobby Miller. Um, you know, what I have been finding is that I want three hitters in a row in drafts, and that has led me to a lot of builds with Bobby Miller because I want to have two of the better, you know, 15 to 20s um, if I'm going to be passing on those first 10 starting pitchers. So, uh, yeah, I love Bobby Miller. I just think he has the full arsenal, velo, uh, great team backing him. One question is how many innings he'll get. Uh, the Dodgers kind of do like a, a, like a secret six-man rotation thing where everybody gets extra rest, but... You know, he's the one few one of the few guys on that team that is ready to go for innings, I think. And so I think he gets 160 or so. And how much more you expect these days anyway? So do you think he could be the number one in innings? I know this seems weird on that team, but like I think a lot of people are projecting Yamamoto to kind of be pushed back. Walker Bueller is dealing with the thing. I mean, do you think like Bobby could end up being one or two in innings on this team? I mean, you know who led him last year it was Clayton Kershaw with 130. So God, can you imagine? Can you imagine? <laughs> that, is a, that, that is a depressing thought uh, there. But, you know, Bobby Miller is, I guess, arguably the best return on investment of any of these guys, right? You know, I think that's maybe the bigger point of view from a fantasy perspective. 
Well, I've been splitting the difference between him and Grayson Rodriguez um, and just getting kind of half and half shares of those two. Uh, sometimes I'll just let the room decide which one I get. Um, but both of those guys are going as like high number twos. And if you're going to get a low number one, you got to get a high number two. So that's that's kind of how I see them. All right. Let's get to uh, one of your guys here, Welsh, that we've talked about quite a bit. Cole Reagans of the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Reagans has been a guy that we have talked a lot about. It's a very trendy name. The ADP has risen a bit, though. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind is every single draft season, the fantasy baseball community gets onto a player, gets excited about a player, and then that player goes from being a value to being well, not so much a value. So he's cracked the top 100 overall now. He's at 97. But again, it's not a crazy jump so far for him. Yeah, and, and I, I want to get Eno's take on it. Like, definitely don't call Ro Cole Reagan's my guy. Like, I have him high, but this is, you know, this is uh, Pollock and plenty of other people. But what I think is interesting about Reagan's is I think Reagan's is the most deceptive draft prep pitcher of all of them because I don't think anything is representative of where he goes. You just said it. Our own ADP, uh, any site-specific ADP, an aggregate ADP, I just don't think it really tells you the story. If you think you can kind of game plan, you're like, all right, well, I'm going to get Cole Reagans because he's like the 28th pitcher or something like that, or he's the 30th pitcher. No, because Cole Reagans is so polarizing. He's had a great spring. The fastball looks as dynamic as ever. We've seen what this looked like last year in a smaller-ish stint. And everything is carried over and it looks projectable to go over bigger innings. So wherever you think you're going to get him, somebody's going to do something. I, I say irrational. I'm not trying to be negative about it. They're going to do something that is not of the norm. He's going to go way higher. So he's the most deceptive pitcher in my mind in his variance of going 90th overall to 50th overall. You know, do you agree with that assessment? And should we agree that Cole Reagans tr really can have that upside of being a top 15 overall SP? Yeah, I mean, the only shares I actually have of him are from last year in my keeper leagues. You know, mm. I picked him up full sale last year as soon as I saw those stuff changes. This year, I, I agree with you, man. Chris, like every draft I've been in, I've been like, oh, is it almost? Nope, there he goes. <laughs> it's getting close to Reagan's time yeah. and it's gone. And it's yeah. gone. So, yeah. um, I, and I, you know, I pushed him. I, I have him in my top 25. I feel like that's a, a good place for him. Uh, it's higher than my projections say I should have him. Um, it's right around some pitchers I really like, like Joe Musgrove uh, and Dylan Cease. Like, I, I don't know that I'm going to push him all the way up to Bobby Miller, Freddie Peralta, Grayson Rodriguez territory, which is the back end of the top 20. So I don't I've done I'm done pushing him and uh, he just keeps getting pushed by the room. So um, you mentioned Freddie Peralta, you know, that's one of my guys that I keep saying, you know, if, if something happens to Strider, he becomes a fascinating wager potentially to lead the National League in strikeouts. And I have a share of it just because, you know, the way pitchers drop like flies, it's not an impossibility. Is Peralta a guy for you that you're on? Because I keep saying that I'm comfortable with him as a potential um, fantasy ace because, frankly, I like to hit those offensive players early in my drafts, and Peralta is one of those guys that tends to be around in ADP. Do you see Peralta the same way, or are you more concerned that he doesn't have the innings potential of maybe some other guys? Yeah, I've got him down for uh, 165 innings. Uh, there's a little bit of a drop from the, the biggest studs, but Co Garrett Cole was a – you know, you had him down for 185 innings at least, and there those go. Um, so I, I expect a little bit less out of my pitchers every year. Um, and uh, I just did the TGFBI draft, and my two starting pitchers there, uh, my first two starting pitchers are Freddie Peralta and Grayson Rodriguez. That's the kind of, mm -hmm. um, you know, back end number twos, like the high high number twos, back end number ones that I'm trying to, to pair if I do the, the hitting up top. And I've been doing that same kind of thing. I, I feel like that's that's where I've been living too. I want to get your take on Reagan's too. Uh, here are the projections I'm looking right now over on Fangraphs. Uh, we could look at the ATC ones. 160 innings uh, for him. They're putting him at a again 9.6 K per nine, uh, which is you know a, a little bit below what he was at last year. So Do you think that's low. fair? Do you think that's kind of what you're looking for in terms of the 3.89 ERA? Does that feel like Reagan's for you? Uh, you know, mine are higher than that. I don't know why it's like every once in a while I get a projection out of my own system. I'm like, what is going on here? But you know, uh, I, one thing that's interesting about Reagan's is his stuff is even better this spring. So, you know, what we get, the reports that we get are not full. Um, you know, we don't get complete stat cast on everybody. 
But from him, we are hearing uh, better vertical movement, better velo. Um, should make the whole thing even better than it was last year. And what we saw, honestly, over the course of last year was it got better. Like, at least velo-wise, it kept getting better and better uh, as the season went on. So, um, I don't know. I, I think that uh, it's likely the projections are off. But if you if you push him, you fall in love with him too much, and he's like your ace or something, then that's weird too, I think. You know, also we had, uh, I'm actually just pulling this up as we were talking yesterday, the, the goofy thing about spring training, uh, especially out here in Arizona, is they don't all have stat cast data. And it's super frustrating. The only place it does is Salt River Fields, where Cole Reagans was yesterday and pitched. And just to give some people insight, fastball on average was up almost a mile per hour uptick. Change up was up. The cutter was up a mile and a half over spin down just a tiny bit, but velo across the board up. He had 20, he had a 23% whiff. He had, uh, I mean, yeah, it, the numbers are pretty ridiculous. A 50% swing and whiff rate on the change up. CSW is actually a little bit lower, 25% overall, but overall upticks from Salt River Fields on his data to kind of speak to what Eno was saying, that things are moving up. Right. If you've got questions, drop them here in the chat. Here's one from Nicholas Nielsen. Great name, by the way. With Cole being injured, uh, give me every possible share of Tariq Scuba winning the AL Cy Young. Would love to hear Eno's thoughts. So I want to get your thoughts uh, first on Cole, the adjustments, and then, of course, uh, Tariq Scuba, who is another very trendy pick in 2024 where people are really excited about Scooble as they should be last year was incredibly encouraging, but again, only about a hundred innings. So uh, your adjustment on Cole, are you out altogether on Garrett Cole in 2024? Now with this news, he just at the right price. Is that where Cole is? And then Scooble, is he somebody that can contend for a Cy Young in the American league? Well, I had to push Cole down past, uh, you know, Justin Verlander, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's a guy who's injured, who could be good. It should be good this year projected. Well, um, but at least with Verlander, we know, we know what's going on and it's probably not going to be that much missed time with Cole. It's, it's either, or, so I think you could push him, uh, down even further, but there is that enticing, you know, oh, maybe it'll still be, you know, 150 innings and it'll be great. So, um, you know, I think he's probably a very back end sort of top 40 type pitcher now. Who would you rather um, have Cole or Bieber? Uh, Bieber. Yeah, me too. Okay. Cole or is up. Uh, he says he's fully healthy. He went to driveline and changed his pitches. Like, uh, I, I just, the, at least I know too. I, I hate the uncertainty. Can we uh, believe like, in anybody who doesn't go to driveline anymore? I feel like that's the thing. Like, <laughs> that's why I mean, am I right or am I right? That's why everyone's out on Mike Trout. We yeah. never hear that he's going well, to Well, I wish you would go to driveline. So you can I'll go, go to driveline. I'll go right now. You know now. it's spreading to hitters now too. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Just a little yeah. off-season improvement from you, Welks. Just once. Just go to driveline, <laughs> just please. Just Next right. season. Just wait. Best shape of my life. Oh. I promise. <laughs> my, you know, Tariq Skubal, thoughts? My uh, best American League projections uh, in terms of ERA that's derived from my Stuff Plus numbers um, are Corbin Burns, um, number one, George Kirby, number two, Tariq Skubal, number three. Wow. wow. Um, so those are the best ERA uh, projections um, out of my sort of top 30, uh, which includes some volume to it too. But Skubal's up there, and he's got the thing, same thing with Reagans, where it's like, we saw this amazing run, um, and I would love to bet on regression, but Scooble's come out this spring, and he's throwing harder, and he's throwing with more verd, and it's like, you know, okay, so maybe it's just all going to get better. Um, I, I, the, the one thing that I think is if I was going to order them in terms of innings, I was think I might I would get this year out of those three, I would probably make him last of those three as well. So, um, if you want me to put some like back end money on somebody, it's Kirby, I guess. No, Kirby, that hey. that's the a very popular guy. Pianowski loves him. Welsh loves him. It seems like you love Kirby as well. So is Kirby the fantasy ace that you know, maybe people should really start to, because it feels like the community has embraced him obviously, because you know, it's like three analysts in a row have come on and kind of said that same thing. He now, was my so. number five and then Cole got hurt. So he's now my number four. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the, one of the differences between him and Corbin Burns is that Kirby, uh, is like still, you know, mixing around his, is like, he's still adding pitches. Like he's still like, he added a he's splitter. Tinkering. He's, yeah. he's tinkering. Like there's this opportunity for him to like add another pitch and get even better in terms of strikeouts. 
And then the competition yeah. in the park are, are mm. I know Corbin Burns in Baltimore. Baltimore now has what Mount Baltimore and is, is more of a pitcher's park, but he still has to go into New York. He still has to go into Boston. He still has to face the Blue Jays. There's a lot of good offenses. I think the offenses Kirby has to face out in the West are just not on the same level. Um, and then he, he pitches in a great home park that's super cold. So uh, Kirby by nose between those two, but Scoobles in that mix. Those are my top three in the AL for me. We had this really good well, discussion too. Yeah, just as, uh, sadly, my last episode on rates and barrels, but it was like one of the coolest was the live episode that DVR Eno and I did, and we had Cal Manzardo on, and then we had this really great discussion that popped up randomly. That was like, if not Garrett Cole, by the way, it was said it was like, or no, it said if it wasn't Strider like Cole, who was like the number one pitching prospect, and I brought up Kirby, and we had this kind of long discussion about like where Kirby can go. So you know, the thing you can go back and listen to to kind of hear that uh, unwind a little bit as well. Well. Yeah. Where do you have school right now? I'm looking at the consensus ADP right now. He's the 13th pitcher off the board. Uh, we have George Kirby's the 11th pitcher off the board. Do you have them both in similar? You have, I assume you have Kirby higher. I have Kirby least. higher. Yeah, I've got Kirby at six and I've got mm -hmm. Scoobal at 11. So they're both top 12. They're both the uh, SP ones, but I am high. I mean, I want to put Kirby higher. I really should, but I, I, I think I'm one of the higher uh, six and uh, what I just say, 11 or 12 for Scoobal. All right. All right, you know, I want to get your thoughts on Michael King. This is a pitcher that I've been very high on. Uh, Welsh and I have talked extensively about him. Now there's nothing standing in his way. The innings are going to be there. The starts are going to be there. It's just a matter of staying healthy and doing it. The Padres are still a pretty good lineup last time I checked. I know Soto's not there, but it's not like they are bereft of talent in terms of the batting order, in terms of defensively what they offer too. So in your opinion, uh, do you think Michael King can be a breakout pitcher? Because it seems like the ADP has not moved no matter how much we've all been hyping him this offseason. Is King a guy on your radar as well? Yeah, 100%. Uh, he's right next to another one of my favorites, Dylan Cease, in that um, that that's Stuff Plus loves them. You know, uh, I've got projections uh, that are similar with really great strikeout rates uh, due to how good their stuff is. Some question with Cease about command, some question with King about innings. I think that's a great place to, to shop for your third or fourth starting pitcher because all those guys are going to have questions. The guys around them all have questions. Justin Steele, like, why did it end up that way? Jesus Lazardo, like the, the Velo, when the Velo was down, he was no good. And, you know, um, you, you Darvish is down there. Hunter Green needs to, needs to get better to sort of deserve that ranking. So, um, you know, I, I think Michael King just having an innings risk there. It is annoying though. Inning, innings risk is a little bit like batting average on the hitting side. You, you, you take a risk. You say, well, the batting average might not be great, but everything else is good. And you do that a couple of times. You go, Oh crap. My batting average is terrible on this team. And, and then it's hard to kind of get it back up. Innings risk is the same way. You take one innings risk and then you're like, uh, and then you take a second one and you're like, oh, no, none of my guys are healthy for opening day. <laughs> you know? So um, I I, I want to be careful about it. I want to pair him. That's why I like Bobby Miller and Grayson Rodriguez. I think they're healthy. I think they're going to pitch all season. I think it's going to be pretty decent innings. If you put Michael King next, you can say, hey, if I get 120, 3.6, 3, ERA, great strikeouts, you know, a bunch of, you know, bunch of wins. I'll take that. Um, I just don't know that I can predict. And the number I have right now is 142 innings. What do you, what's it, what's it that, over on the under on that one? I probably going to slightly, yeah, I'm going to take the over, but like it, it's being optimistic, it, but like, cause he's put up innings before, like he, like in the, say, in the minor state, leagues, he's put up innings. I and mean, yeah. this was a guy who was a starter in the minors. And I think that, you know, uh, age wise, I, I keep going back to that same thing. You know, you know, this used to be the normal path, right? Once upon a time. You know, guys like Johan Santana would pitch out of the bullpen and then eventually become a starting pitcher. And, you know, we know the rest is history there. But that was how guys sort of had to earn their way into rotations once upon a time. You don't see that very much because everything is so specialized in baseball. But, well, I mean, I feel like he can go for 160 this year. I don't think they can afford for him to not have 160 plus. And that's that the problem. Way of putting like, it. There's probably a reason that they're in on these Dylan Cease discussions right now. Drew Thorpe has been phenomenal, and I think he could deserve – he's deserved of a rotation spot. But everybody is like this young option. Can Jairo Iriarty be a starter for them? I don't know. Snelling ready. Is Snelling ready? Like, he kind of wants to. I've talked to him a whole bunch. Drew Thorpe – how many rookies can they put into this? So I think, like, they can feel the pressure. That's why the Cease stuff is coming up. All of this to say, if they were to get Cease, I don't think that changes – they have to get 150, 160 plus out of their main starters. And Michael King 
is one of those guys. I don't think they're comfortable being a Dodgers type of team where, you know, they'll piggyback guys and go to six man rotations. They might be forced into it. So uh, by virtue of like, they cannot afford not to, they're going to press Michael King. I don't think this is a team that's looking to baby anybody right now. If they're going to baby, they won't bring them up. That's what that would be the uh, case against like Thorpe. The, the language uh, coming out of spring, too, has been, you know, King saying, I'm ready to go as far as they'll let me. Team saying, you know, he can go as far as, as he can go. So, you know, I think that's uh, that's what's going to happen. I love it. All right. Uh, before we get to the next name on our list, Draft Wizard is up and running and ready for you to help dominate your fantasy baseball draft. So if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Stop what you're doing except watching this show. You should always continue to watch this show. But use the Mock Draft Simulator. You can run uh, a million drafts in a day. It's so crazy how fast you can run drafts with the mock draft simulator on Draft Wizard. It lets you undo picks. If you don't like the way the draft is going and you want to go backwards, you can go back and make better picks on some of the players that maybe you should have been taking. It'll analyze at the back end how you did, which experts liked your draft, didn't like your draft. It'll tell you where you should have gone for certain moments. The pick predictors there, the uh, category predictors there, all of the tools are there and ready for you. And you could sync with your draft analyzer during your live drafts, a draft assistant as well. So if you haven't already, download Draft Wizard or go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard today. Take the stress out of your draft and turn it into success instead. Draft Wizard is the best. We'll be using it at uh, 7 o'clock tonight 30 to minutes. do our mock draft. Just 30 minutes from now. Scott Bogdan, myself, Kelly Kirby, the wonky penguin. You know, before we get to the last two names on the list real quick here, I just wanted to ask you this. You mentioned Dylan Cease. Um, Obviously, strikeouts not an issue with Cease. The ERA, 391-220-463. Who is Dylan Cease when it comes to ERA in 2024? Uh, I'll take the, the 391 with a ton of strikeouts. So okay. I, I think the command is always going to be a problem. But one thing that's funny about command is it's not actually that sticky year to year. So, you know, I think he could feel healthy, you know, have a better season in terms of command. It won't be like ever be great, but it'll just be better than last year. <laughs> No. And Two he's got a beard this year, by the way. He's got a beard. Well, he got rid of important. just the mustache. He's got a New big, beard fluffy energy. beard. Yeah, I think the beard. Yeah. Maybe he could like do a little cheaty, hide some stuff in there, better grip. That's how you get the <laughs> command sticky is you get it in the beard. So, all right, sorry. I took my names. beard down today because I knew we were doing four hours and I wanted to be very, you know, sleek and aerodynamic for that whole show. I, <laughs> I was really worried about mine. My, my, this is as best as it I was gets. worried about yours too, but more because yeah. it's patchy sometimes. All right, Bailey Ober and Brandon fought. Two more guys on our list. You know, I want your take on both of these guys. Uh, Bailey Ober going around the same spot as Michael King in terms of ADP. Brandon Fott going even later. We saw Fott get right towards the end of the season and into the playoffs. We know the homer over there, the Welsh, is very excited about Fott. So I want your take on Ober and Fott and what you think they might be able to do in 2024. Ober's got an up arrow for me. I think he's he does some stuff that my model doesn't capture. Uh, just being super tall and having a weird release point. Um He's also locates, you know, pretty well. And the only thing that makes me worried is with that, like kind of 90 mile an hour fastball, how many homers he's going to give up. He could be one of these uh, guys that has a low whip I mean, that that I think you can uh, bank on, um, but a little bit higher ERA than you expect because of the home run rate. Um, those guys are fine, too. And in fact, they, they you know, sometimes people forget to manage their whip. And so over can be a real sort of interesting, I need to improve my whip at this point. If you're, if you're using your draft simulator to check your, your, how you're doing and you see that your whip is a little high over is a perfect pick there. Uh, I'll take King over, over, but uh, again, there's an interesting use case there. Fought added a sinker uh, and, and finally did everything Chris Welsh thought he could do uh, in the, uh, in the postseason last year. Um, and the only thing that, that worries me, is that we saw even in that great postseason run how much he struggled against lefties. The sinker won't save him against lefties. He kind of just tries to survive against lefties. He thrives against righties and survives against lefties. Um, and so I expect the ERA to be over four, uh, but I think he'll be use, useful and uh, be kind of a, an SP4 if, sort of situation. If you do that change up a little bit more, you think we that that would be the fix? Yeah, the changeup. Uh, I think he's tinkered with. He's it's been good. It's been it's been worse. It's like it's. Yeah, I not. I don't think it's ever been listed. Is it been listed as like his number one pitch? It's not his best off season. Off season no, pitch. no. I, I mean, he, I think he threw he threw it like eight percent of the time. I'm not looking at the thing. Yeah, he threw yeah. It a little I, bit last year. If that could take a little step forward, um, I'd believe in him a little bit more. Um, but uh, you know, his four seam is not as good as his two seam, so he'll always be a little bit worse against lefties because he has to use the yeah. four seam more against lefties. 
You know, before we let you go, one question for you. Who is that pitcher you keep drafting at the end of drafts every single time? Because everybody wants to know that answer out of your mouth. Oh, at the end? Uh, you know Wynn. you know that guy is. It's Keaton Wynn. Uh, Keaton Wynn is this guy for the Giants that um, he had elbow surgery, and he just threw split finger after split finger, uh, and he threw it 60% of the time last year. I don't think that'll continue. I think his slider is good enough, and you'll get a, a more normal starting pitcher mix out of him. But uh, five innings uh, in San Francisco – uh for super cheap i'll take keaton win he's eno saris everybody he's the man uh the man at the athletic mlb and also at fan graphs too make sure you follow him on x at eno saris uh eno make sure you get some rest after all the fire alarms now have ceased for you so uh we wish you <laughs> nothing but clean internet See clean drinking did, water and uh yeah you did yeah i got through a little cease in there a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. when we come back i'll be between two chris's because chris towers is going to join us here on the program and we're going to talk to him about building the perfect bench because just like the end of drafts we're getting towards the end of this show so stick around chris towers joins the conversation right here we'll be right back after this quick break 